Hi there, and welcome to The Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life, using real food, and we keep it real simple. And today, we have an all-in-one meal, chicken and wild rice bake with carrots that we're gonna cook right in the Ninja Foodie. Uh, and so let's get started with that. First thing I have is these carrots that I've already peeled, and if you wanna check out a quick little video on a trick on how to peel carrots really quickly, you can just check that video out right over there. I'll link to it. And I also quartered the carrots. I wanted them in nice sized pieces. I mean, you could technically slice them up, but I just wanted, since we're doing this as a dinner, I wanted them to be in nice sized pieces. So we're gonna throw the carrots into the Ninja Foodi steamer basket and pour in two cups of chicken broth. Chicken stock will work. Chicken broth will work. Beef stock would work, really, honestly, but we're cooking with chicken, so I like to use chicken stock. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is put the basket in and get our pressure cooker lid on. We are gonna be putting this under pressure, so we just wanna put that on. Make sure that we are to the seal position, the black valve on the back is to the seal. Turn the Ninja Foodi on, hit the pressure. We're gonna do high pressure. The time, we're gonna do zero minutes. And I'll explain that in just a minute and hit start. Okay, so this will go around while it's building the, the heat and the steam to come under pressure. So while this is coming up to pressure, let me explain what the next steps are gonna be. We have a cup and a half of wild rice here, which is a wild rice blend. And I will link below in the description to the kind of wild rice blend that I am using, uh, but you can use your favorite. And then we have a seasoning blend, and this is made out of stuff that I'm sure you probably have in your pantry or it's very easy to get. It is simply salt, pepper, thyme leaves, not ground thyme, but thyme leaves, garlic powder, onion powder, and a little bit of poultry seasoning. And that's it, and we're gonna use that to uh, season up this dish really well. Mm, so I have two pounds of chicken thighs here. You can see that they are not trimmed and they are, they are definitely rock solid. And I did that on purpose. This is a dish where you want your chicken thighs to be frozen because we're gonna have to cook this wild rice quite a while under pressure um, in order to get it done. So we want to start out with our frozen chicken um, so that we don't overcook it. The reason why I pick chicken thighs um, is because they are so forgiving when they're cooked long. So if you use chicken breast with this recipe instead, it may come out too dry even if it's frozen. Now I'm starting to see steam come out. That means that the pot has heated up. And so I'll be expecting to see this go to done because once it hits the zero, it's just gonna say that it's done. We're gonna do an immediate release and get those carrots out of there. They're gonna sit to the side while we pressure cook the rest of our dinner. All right, we just came um, under pressure. The red button popped up, and this is gonna, as soon as it hits the right pressure, then this should say zero and done. Okay, so we went to done, and then it immediately came onto the keep warm, and it's been on for about a minute, um, and that's fine. Immediate release. All the steam has released, and the red button has popped down, so now I can open the lid, and. I will keep the keep warm function on um, just to keep the pot warmed up. That's gonna help us come up to pressure for the next step just a little bit quicker. So I'm gonna remove this and just kind of let a little bit of the steam go so you don't burn yourself. And then grab out our basket. And we're just gonna put these to the side. And we're gonna start on our second part of this dish. So the first thing I'm gonna do is leave this water in here, okay? Now I chose two cups of chicken stock. Ordinarily I would do two and a quarter cups for one and a half cups of the wild rice blend. However, the chicken thighs are gonna give off some natural stock and juice themselves. So I didn't want the rice to be too uh, liquidy at the end of cooking. I want it to be perfect. So I decreased the amount um, of liquid in the pot to make up for the amount of juices that are come, gonna come from our chicken. Um, so let's get the wild rice in. And I did rinse the wild rice briefly, um, just to get any debris or anything that might be off of it. It's not as important um, as it is with white rice, but I did want to just give it a quick rinse. I always suggest that you rinse your white rice very well. It takes off the first layer of like 
talc and things like that. And it just uh, allows for you to have a fluffier rice, I think. Okay, set that, set that over here. I'm just gonna move this rice around so that it is covered in the chicken stock. One thing to know about wild rice when you're cooking it under pressure, it still takes 30 minutes or so. So it is not the one third rule that we use with a lot of other things. Um, and it, it just is gonna take that much time. So I have a seasoning blend here and I'm just gonna use about a third of it and I'm just gonna sprinkle it on the top. I wanna season all the layers of this dish. That's good. And then we're gonna take a few pats of butter and we're just gonna lay it in there. Maybe three, because I wanna have enough. Yep, that'll be perfect. So I'm gonna put three pats of butter and now we'll layer with our chicken thighs. Now ordinarily, if I was making a dish and, and the chicken thighs were um, thawed, I would season them before on both sides. But since these are frozen, it's not gonna matter. We're just gonna sprinkle the seasoning on top. Now I'm gonna place these uh, chicken thighs right on top here in a layer. And if you can see, I have, all my chicken thighs are coming out pretty nicely. That's because when I buy them in bulk from the grocery store, what I do is separate them and freeze them um, on like a rack. I put a sheet of parchment down and then I lay out the chicken thighs. I throw them in the freezer for an hour or two and then I put them in the bag. And that way I can grab out what I want and it doesn't, they don't freeze together in a big clump. Now some of these will overlap and that's okay, but I am trying to spread them out as much as I can on this rice. This is about two pounds. Okay. I'm gonna put that bigger one over there, move this littler one, just kind of arranging them so that they're gonna cook evenly. Yeah, that'll, that'll work. Move that one right like that, perfect, okay, all right. And so now I'm gonna do the same thing, is put some seasoning on top, about a third of this seasoning. Perfect, three little pats of butter, and you could break them up if you wanted. I might put one on each chicken uh, thigh here. Ooh, don't wanna miss that little guy there, okay. And now we're going to put our pressure lid back on. And we're going to go to pressure. Let's turn it, off, turn it back on. Pressure, high. Time is going to be for 30 minutes. We're going to do an immediate release, which I know is a little controversial, but um, we are going to do it for this dish. Okay, make sure we're on the seal mode in the back and we'll just let this pot come back up to pressure and let it cook for 30 minutes. Okay guys, so you can see I was a little delayed. It's been a minute, 30 seconds that it's on the keep warm, but I'm gonna go ahead and immediate release right now. Okay, so the button just depressed, which means we have released all the pressure and I'm gonna go ahead and turn the pot. And when you take your lid off, do it away from you to divert the steam away from your face. And we're gonna take a look here and it looks like I'm gonna flip these chicken thighs. It's looking good though. Oh yeah, they are done, totally done. Now one of the things with chicken thighs is they may look a little pink, um, but they are completely done. I can tell by the feel of them. I'm not concerned about this top little bit of liquid at all because the next step we're gonna do is put in those carrots. Now I didn't wanna put in the carrots raw because they do take a while to bake. I mean, they can take 40 to 50 minutes to bake. Um, so what I decided to do was bake this with the carrots par done and that's why we did the zero uh, time on the pressure cook in the very beginning. So we're just gonna lay these on top. Again, we're gonna go ahead and season. Now, I may not use all of this seasoning. I'm just gonna kind of use my judgment. I don't want um, the carrots to be too, too seasoned, too salty, but I do want everything to have a good flavor. So I think I'm just gonna just sprinkle it around here. So I did not use all the seasoning and that's fine. Just use your judgment on how much you'd like to use. Then I'm just gonna put the last three little pats of butter and we're gonna get this lid down and we're gonna bake. And I'm gonna say probably 
Um, maybe 15 minutes is gonna do it to uh, get rid of all that extra liquid. Oops, I forgot a couple carrots. I couldn't see them, I'm so short. You don't wanna miss any of those. And you know what, let's get those seasoned too. Perfect. Okay, so we are going to hit the bake roast button and 375 is a good temperature for this. And I'm gonna do 15 minutes, but we're gonna check it in about seven minutes and just see how things are coming along in there. The only thing I'm waiting for is to heat the carrots and to um, absorb some of that extra liquid that's in there, that chicken broth. Okay, so it's been seven minutes. So I'm just gonna lift the lid and give it a little peek and it is looking really good. I think it can go another three minutes though. Um, so I'm just gonna put this right back down and let's go another three and then we will check it plate and I'll give it a taste. All right guys, so it has been baking for uh, 10 minutes on 375 and we're gonna go ahead and stop it and open it up and it looks like uh, the carrots are done. And I know the chicken's already done, I already know that. So I'm just gonna grab a few out here. Now if you like your vegetables cooked a little bit um, more, please, you can take this the whole 15 minutes or you can even do it longer. You're not gonna hurt anything in the pot if you let it cook longer. Or you could simply keep the lid down and let the residual heat continue to cook. Um, but I like my vegetables on the crisper side, um, so I'm gonna stop it now and go ahead and plate up. So let me uh, move this carrot out of the way and get a nice chicken thigh here. And just put that on a plate. I'm gonna get another little bit of rice. Oh, it smells so good. Now there is some liquid left uh, from the rice. Uh, and I think that that, from what I've read, that's to be expected. Um, next time, maybe I'll try steaming it and see how that works. But I know uh, that it looks good. It looks like it is done. So let's give it a taste. All right, first, let's dig into this carrot. Oh, I know. I can tell that's perfect for me. Mm-hmm. Mm. Wonderful texture. But again, it's on the firm side. So if you like your vegetables a little more done, I would definitely keep this going for a few more minutes. And then the rice, it's gonna be hot. I love wild rice because it has such a nice chew to it. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow. Wow, that's really good. The flavors are all throughout the rice. I mean, you can taste the seasoning blend, you can taste the stock, I absolutely love it. And now, let's look at that chicken thigh. See how easy it came apart? And it does not look dry at all. Mmm. Wow. That is like melt in your mouth good. Oh my goodness. Now this took about an hour to make, but it is mostly hands off. So it is really super easy, especially when you get home from work and you've got a lot of little things to do around the house. You can put it in, let it go, um, and then just turn it on the bake function and let it go again, and then you have dinner. And it really is hands off, delicious, healthy alternative uh, for dinner. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe at the end. You can do that right over there and hit that notification bell so that you're notified when we put out a new video. If you care to join one of our Ninja Foodie Facebook groups, you can do that. We have Ninja Foodie 101, where we go over some basics of the Ninja Foodie, share some tips, tricks, and recipes. We also have Ninja Foodie Fresh and Healthy Meals, where we try to share recipes that are just a little bit healthier cooked in our Ninja Foodie. Until next time, bye-bye.